I actually had something I oh, wanted to ahead. ask an go actual ahead. cop of because me and my coworker we were talking about this and we feel like cops spend too much time in the field. Agreed. So, yeah. like you know, for the army, we'll send you on deployment for so long, and then we'll have you cycle back to the states for so long, and then if we need yep. you back out there, we'll send you back out. So we were like, okay, well, cops should be out for three months, a month, whatever. And then they should cycle back to training, office environment, whatever, to get you out of the shit. Yeah. Because I know my uncle, he was a firefighter, and he was very aware of the fact that they dealt, they were just in the shit. All the, and they saw the worst of humanity. Yeah. Like some of the stories my uncle told me about his firefighter and EMT career is just awful. So do you do you think that that would benefit police across the nation is if you could cycle them in and out? You know, I think that's I think when you're talking about cycling that particular job, the biggest thing that comes to my mind is manpower because right now we're already like spread pretty thin as it is. So I have a counter argument. Go ahead, go ahead. So manpower because there's so much crime going on yeah. and you feel like you're so spread out, right? My take on it is you're not going to, especially in the big cities, and especially with the dense populations, you're not going to be able to chase everything down. Yeah, of course. So the way I perceive it, and you're going to have to correct me on this, the way I perceive it is that the cops are trying to chase everything. Instead of saying, this is the baseline for everything, and everything that comes in that we can chase down, we're going to chase this down to the nth degree, and then, yes, stuff is going to fall fall through the cracks. However, outside of that, the things that we do chase down, the criminals that we do chase down, the thefts that, that we chase all the way down, the car thefts that we chase all the way down because we take the time to, to run it all the way down, those act as the example, which ultimately, as acting as the example, reduces it because they get the punishment because you have the full evidence. Now, this is my thought process on it. Now, tell me where I'm wrong. So I think that your thought process is good, but it's a thought process, one that's based on, I think, a person's perception of how they think this job works. And I say that with the most respect. No, no, no. no. You know, disrespect me if you need no, to. No, seriously, here is real. So you, there's no disrespect taken. We're all good friends. Yeah, so Earlier, we had a disagreement on something. You know, when, when you talk about when you talk about things like, um, you know, what officers chase, what they find, um, you know, we're obviously in Texas. We're obviously close to San Antonio. You know, yeah, they have a D.A. that you know, just re releases it, like just cites and releases for everything. Which, yeah. We talked about that, you know, which, a couple which, podcasts. which is huge, you know, I'm not saying that, you know, I I'm out to go find everyone that has, you know, under two ounces of marijuana. Cause that's not why I got in this field at all. But, you know, I think if I find someone that legitimately stole or hurt someone, it's, it needs to be handled appropriately. Does that make sense? Like the yes. punishment needs to fit so, the crime. Yes. If, I, and I agree with you. If I, we I, move more towards focusing on, it's, more violent crimes that would change a lot of things versus you know, just it, it starts at the top right so like officers are a lot of times to another person's bad actions so military's expeditionary force in a way Ex exactly pearl so come on girl when it comes to when it comes to something like this you have to look at you know okay well i just arrested john smith for stealing and it was stealing let's say over a thousand dollars what have you um, what is what is Texas's? Um, so typically, you can get arrested for anything over a hundred dollars. Oh, yeah. I thought it was like five, six hundred dollars was no, grand something. No, 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 no. So you could, I can arrest John Smith if he walks into a store and steals over a hundred dollars. If it's under a hundred dollars and he has prior convictions, I can arrest him. That so, makes sense. Why yeah. a bunch of so, like grocery yeah. stores change everything from a hundred dollars. And 99 cents so, so that way they can charge for that but then you got a coupon discount at the yeah okay. so if but i'm they, understanding the, your argument you're stating that the first step is not to correct the actions of the police the first step is to correct the, the actions of the judicial system yeah. because the action correcting yeah. those actions corrects the actions of the police 100 yeah, percent. because it gives it because if you have i'll give you an example um 
let's say that I let, did whatever. Yeah, let's say that you were drinking and driving. And let's say that we live in a town where they don't like to arrest, like the DA will not prosecute you for drinking and driving because technically drinking and driving until you hurt someone is a victimless crime, right? Yeah. That's the way the attorneys um, look at it. Look at it. Oh, okay. You know, they'll, they'll give you the argument. Hey, you know, John Smith, he drove drunk this one time, but who hasn't drove drunk, you know, has one or two beers in the jury, right? Now. So they'll paint it like that. But the unfortunate aspect of that is you have young cops out here trying to enforce a broad range of crimes. And obviously I use DWI as being example, the hero, being the hero type of mentality, wanting to stop crime. But you work for a city that doesn't support you, doesn't support your officers. Um, that officer's like, oh, well, I'm here's, there's John, you know, driving drunk again, but. But the judicial sub- the ju- system isn't it's, supporting. It's, it, it, it may break. It, it may, he, they may, they may cut him loose because they may think, oh, well, you know, they, they gave him a slap on the wrist last time. Why am I going to dick with it last? Because the DWI in this case takes four hours, three to four hours to do on that. On right. Average. In the court system? No, just. Just like, for the just police for the, force. For Processing, right? Process it between Holy the, cow. Between two and four hours of pay so on the So that's four hours so you're not dealing with actual yeah. something and, important. And that's so, just DWI. That's just one very crude brief example. So you can't like go, okay, this is this person has the DWI and then you pass that off to someone. Oh no. Because you were the officer on no, scene. No, we have a we have a saying if you if you catch it, you gut it and clean it. So it and I think this is where I'm I'm kind of touching on the the cycle thing, right? Because if you've got folks in the street and they're, you know, they're the, these are they're your guys your on beats. the street, yeah. and they they spend X amount of time in the shit, right? And then you cycle them back out. The people who are back out can do that processing, and this has to do with you know bureaucracy and time management, and hour management, and stuff like this. Again, this is an idea. Yeah. I don't know if it's a viable idea, but I'm thinking from a psychological perspective. Oh yeah, you know, because you figure, you know. I, I work suicides. I, I work. I work very violent. Um, I've worked. I've worked homicides before. I, I've been in situations where um, crimes across the board. You know, You've reached the full spectrum. You know. So from a psychological standpoint, I've gotten really good at uh, masking a lot of things and pushing it down, and then finding a healthier outlet later on. You know, in the week to release that, however that may look. A coping mechanism. A coping mechanism. And I would love, you know, if for my schedule, if I worked, if I work two weeks on and then you have two weeks off, just that, that break in time, I think would be enough to be like, oh, okay, I can, I can de-stress from this. Get your, get your head back together. Well, even if they jump down to, so a couple government agencies, a couple government contractors go, it's called Panama schedule. Two weeks on, one week off or two days on, one day off. So we go from, in your case, if you're working two weeks on. Well, I'm on the Panama schedule right now. But if they win a true Panama schedule, you'd get a proper. Because a lot of people do hybrid. You see it a lot on help desk. Yeah. Your desk jockeys. Um, you see it a lot in call centers. And you probably see this with your dispatchers. Oh, dude, yeah. Like you're, you're your sitting, dispatchers. You're down for 12 hours a day. You and know, how good is that for your body? So you have 12 on, 12 off, 12 on, 12 off, 12 on, 12 off. And then you have two days off. So you have two days to deal with all your stuff that you're dealing with, but it doesn't cover everything. You still have appointments. If you have a family, you have shit that's going on. Yeah, because like, and to double back to Mike's question, you know, about the productivity and, and the enforcement of stuff, you know, we hear stories all the time from San Antonio where... You know, guys, they they don't want to work because why would they risk themselves getting in a fight, getting in a shooting with a turd when their job and their life is going to be up, 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 um, possibly up, up for grabs? You know, they may be fired for that, whether it's a well, good, well, shoot, whether it's a good shoot or not. Yeah. Do, do they have body cams? So every, yeah, they have body cams, but you have to remember that. And, and, and even then. It doesn't matter because they're they're probably going to get a lawsuit put against them. I and mean, probably we saw going in Colorado, to... there was a body cam footage. Yeah. The cop was completely in the end. He did everything by the book, verbatim. Like, you want to talk about rule Nazi? Did everything proper. Taser, taser, taser. Tased the dude. Dude was high on something. 
taser, 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 then pulled the tasers out of himself, ran inside, grabbed an assault rifle, actual assault rifle, not modern day everything assault rifle, came out, shot at the ground first, and then he was he was put down. He was a threat to the life of the officers. Mm-hmm. And I, I think so much of this, you know, when when you talk about at the advent of, of, of George Floyd when all that crap went down and, you know, you go even further back into incidences like Rodney King, um, you have the public perception of, of law enforcement um, putting so, the man so, so down. So skewed because, you know, was was Rodney King wrong? Yeah, obviously it was it was wrong. Was George Floyd wrong? Yeah, obviously those situations was was um, was uh, Yavalde wrong? Yes, obviously. And it's it, we 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 do a job where at, we're in a fishbowl, and everyone watches what we do, and we have to make split second decisions where a normal person can have days, if not weeks, to make a decision. You're you reacting know? off a decision. I have to react based yep. on and when based so, on someone's action. Taking this stuff into account, would additional continuous training as you progress through your career be beneficial? A hundred percent. Does the academy need a wider breadth of training? So I would I would say I would say yes to both. Okay. I would say yes to both. So in certain countries, the Pulitz eye in Germany, for example, it takes. I want to say more than a year. I thought it was a two-year pipeline. It, it's it's a very long process. It's like 18 be, months and, to two years. You know, you're only as good as what you're training and what you're taught to be, right? And I think when it comes to law enforcement in general, I really believe that, you know, a lot of training on the front end and then having departments be accountable for the training in the, in, in the, in the years continuing. I've been very blessed to be a part of an agency where, you know, we have monthly trainings four hours plus that are mandatory that are either that are paid that are either tactics training or we're going over the uh, hold on I want, I want to stop you right, right here are your trainings not paid some places yeah they don't pay for training Ooh. yeah, yeah. so you so i work at this job and i have to upkeep this i understand a contract entity i understand yeah I understand someone that isn't part of this organization. Someone is working outside. You're telling me I work for this organization and essentially I have to pay for my own training. Yeah. yeah that's very common in law enforcement and first responder fields from fire to EMS so to police. I, and I have another question related to this. Are y'all transferable from city to city or do you have to retrain every time you go somewhere new? Depends on the city. So, because I know my, my cousin who's a firefighter, cannot move cities without retraining in an academy from the ground up so you switched organizations I you did. went from one organization to another within the same state within the same state yes but how easy was it switching from a to b very easy only because it wasn't a massive municipality let's say that i went from small let, town a to san antonio so let's let's say you went from houston to dallas yeah, you'd it have would to be go a, to, you have to go to Dallas's academy. Really? Yeah, you'd have to go. To Holy Dallas. cow! Some bullshit. Because yeah. I I know firefighters. Small towns operate differently. So like, I, let's say like let's say that I went from Holotus to Universal City, I wouldn't have to go through any academy. I've been a cop for I've been trained. I'd have to go through a small field FTO retraining, prompt. understanding their policies and procedures. That's it. So so would what's the word I'm looking for? Where it's the same. Would, would making it the same training across the board, at least for the state, make it better? So it is the same training, but there's certain aspects that certain cities want to push more than other cities. And their human resources departments are going to want to be accounted for versus another city's human resources. So it, it gets very bureaucratic. Very, so, very bureaucratic. From what I'm understanding, politics has jumped so much into crime fighting crime stopping yeah, you, that has got to the point that if i want to go to from baltimore to waldorf oh, i'm talking yeah. maryland i'm going from baltimore i care about white on black crime more than i care about white on white crime yeah, yeah you so have, it's it's become political yeah yeah i mean because you figure like we're not the officers aren't the ones that write the laws anymore than the correct soldiers are the ones that make the the the, the political calls on the battlefield right oh no and but, that, well, but that's but that's what the 
issue is there shouldn't be political calls on the battlefield. And we have the same issues of the issue is in military, we hate our mandatory training. We hate our monthly training because it's done so often and it's rinse repeat of the same thing. Well, and I'm, I'm going to touch on something here. It's part of the reason that we had so much trouble in Vietnam, in Iraq, in Afghanistan. Afghanistan. Why do you say that? I guess I don't, I'm trying to so make y'all's famous reference. What was happening was, is poli- and what, what should happen, in my opinion, what should happen with the military is that you set the boundaries, you set the rules of engagement, you release the dogs of war, and once the dogs are gone, gone yeah. you don't, you can't do anything. You say, this is the end goal. This is the winning. This do is it. where you win. Yeah, and that. once you win, that's it. And these are your rules of engagement. That's it. But instead, the rules of engagement were constantly changing and shifting as the politicians got involved. And every time the politicians yeah. got involved, it changed it. Man, soldiers died. Because we had hate and discontent. We were only allowed to lay hate and discontent when someone fired on us first. So we know... Individual A has a gun. He's pointing it at us, but he hasn't shot. We can't shoot till they shoot. Rules of engagement. Geneva Convention only applies to military individuals, not civilians. So they shoot at us first. Now we can lay hate and death. Now they've back. shot at us and they've dropped three of us, but that doesn't matter. It only matters that the optics on it looks like, oh, man, they were returning fire in self-defense. It's the exact same thing with us, man. There was an incident a few years ago at a Mexican restaurant in San Antonio where an SAPD officer got got a call for some disturbance that took place in a drive-thru. And um, the officer walks up to him. The guy gets out and holds a cell phone the way you would hold a gun. And it's night. This is like midnight, right? So it's hard to distinguish. Just exactly goes like that. Picks the gun up like that. Picks the phone up like that. Officer at night reacts, shoots and kills him. The officer got acquitted like it was fine. But he had to go through a year plus of... Probably without pay. Probably got fired. You know, a whole bunch of stuff that came down the pipeline. Um, So you have like the letter of the law and the color of the law. Now, that being said, there's also instances where it's very clear that the cop was in the wrong, but the... Well, we had the acorn guild, cop. Not guild. What was it called? Not the guilty? Cop? No. The, the, like, cop guild. Um, cop guild. Um, cop association? Uh, uh, the union? What, yeah, like the union. union. Okay, like the union. union covers down on these cops when realistically they shouldn't be covering down. So from what I've seen, and I definitely want you to touch on this, I've seen unions cover guilty cops because union is union. White, black, indifferent, it's a gray area. Union is very gray, and we're going to cover you because you've been, you've paid dues. Mm -hmm. You've paid your association dues for union. We're just going to cover you. Blanket, here's a lawyer, and we'll settle in a court. Right. If I can be very honest, I'm going to be honest. I'm not the biggest fan of unions to an extent, right? Like when an officer dies, unions have a place when, when someone passes away, when it gets, when someone's family needs to get taken care of, but that they're great. But when you're talking about a a group of people, um, because I've done this job for 10 years, right? This is how I make money for my family. I love this job. I'm 12 years IT and you're 16 or 14. There are bad apples in every bunch. 14. For, so we all have tenure in our, in our occupation. In our occupation. There, there's bad apples in every bunch. And I think that when you talk about, you know, a bad officer or a bad firefighter, a bad paramedic, you know, it's one of those things where, no, man, if you if you are a turd and you are doing some really shitty things, you need to be gone. Yes. You don't you don't need to taint the rest of us because uh, that's not even just you guys. Yeah, you're the reason that. Everyone hates us right now. You're the and, reason and for a bad that's name. True for for the, IT the too. doctors, oh yeah, dude. who 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 leave like instruments inside of patients and they get covered down on. IT folks. Who, but you saw it. I had a shit. loose screw in my knee. A loose screw. There should have been no screws in my knee. The pastors that that rave little no boys, screws. You know, I had no screws. What you, What'd you say? I said the the pastors that the pastors and priests that rape kids. Or, or or like Joel Olstein, who's yeah, I'm I'm gonna name drop Joel Olstein, who's like, nah, y'all can't come into my church to get away from the flooding or whatever, or, you know. Yeah, I mean, 
it sucks across the board, but do you care more about the people or do you care more about a policy? I think that's and, the biggest thing is the people, you know. Cause... But it's, it's people versus policy. How do your – this is one thing I want to touch on. Your dispatchers. Dispatchers across the board have – they're the unsung heroes of the police force of paramedics 100%, across the board. 100%. Like they really are because we're talking about old lady is – she's dying in her household. Yeah. But you also have a robbery and a public shooting. Yeah, do they, what What do you respond to first? You have an old lady dying. You have a okay, maybe she has five, ten years left. You have a public shooting, so he's he's dropping bodies left and right. And you have a bank robbery. It's like how they, they make some calls that I would never want to make. They really do a great job with being able to funnel the calls day by day. And I think that's a that's definitely a profession that's up there where. They don't get enough credit for what they do because we deal with the people that they're on the phone with and we hear the calls that go out and I make it a point to always go in my dispatcher's office and talk to them. Um, but they, they have to funnel through a lot of shit and I could say that I could not do what they do solely because the patience and the amount of professionalism that they have to have is is amazing like I, and there were there was one i listened to the other day it hopped up on my youtube feeds it was like a minute 30 clip of this woman calling in a pizza order yeah like you, you're looking she's she's obviously being abused you can hear it you can understand it you can hear a voice in the background Girl, stop. it is a male you can hear it's a male voice you can understand what's going on and all this goes on. She's ordering pizza through the police dispatch. Order, ordering pizza. Ordering pizza very loosely. So I totally understand. How do you respond? Me specifically, I I can't comprehend how you can respond to a call that is so extreme. What is What are your thoughts when you get dispatch hitting you up saying, example... <laughs> Uh, marital issues in a house. You know, and you, you know there's violence. You know there's violence, and you, you, we're getting to a call where we have a husband and wife fighting. Um, we respond to it. We do our best to stay calm, and obviously the biggest part for us to stay calm is actually how dispatch dispatches the call. Because if they're on the call and they they say, "Hey, officer so and so, we have this call." Like if, if someone's amped up on the other end of the phone, you're it's gonna amp you up, right? Yeah. That's just human. So what's cool about the dispatchers is they're able to stay calm, level headed say, and say, hey, officer, this is what's going they, on. They almost remind me of like pilots when people are calling in fucking exactly. fire support. Exactly. Yeah. Danger yeah. close. Yeah. 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 You, 